Welcome to a look at the top 10 city building games coming up in 2018. Mother Nine, I'm dropping in. At number 10, a game that's got me 10 kinds of excited. This is Industries of Titan. Welcome to Titan. The developers described the game as an industrial city building sim slash strategy game. It's half city builder, half competitive tycoon game, but with some real-time strategy elements thrown in. You play as the head of a giant corporation in competition with others, and your job is to build a city on the surface of Titan, one of Saturn's moons. Starting with just a few small buildings, you can design and build a massive metropolis. As well as building factories, you'll have to set up production lines to process raw resources. You're going to have to design as well as build your own spaceships, which I'm, I'm really excited by. The game has multiple victory conditions, including combat, technological superiority, political influence. It just sounds awesome. This is one to watch. Okay, this is The Colonists, and it's a settlement building game developed by Mode 7, who are the guys behind uh, Frozen Synapse. This is inspired by games like The Settlers and uh, the Anno series, but it just features the cutest robots ever. Just look at them, they're awesome. And your job is to take control of this team of robots who've been tasked with settling a newly discovered planet, preparing the ground for an influx of inhabitants from their home world in the future. And you start off in the Stone Age and you progress right up to the Space Age, building the infrastructure for your colony. Uh, and you've got to put in, uh, you start off with kind of roads and boats and trains, and eventually you get uh, drone transport systems. And it's the usual thing of harvesting natural resources, setting up farming and food production, uh, conquering other settlements, trading with allies, explore, research, manage. It's all that kind of stuff, but with really cute robots. What is not to like? I can't wait to see more about this game. This is another one to watch. Hi, I'm Richard, and I... What's with this music? Can we change these? Ah, much better. Gets me in the mood. So my name is Richard, and, uh, well, uh, you can call me Richie, okay? Let me show you around the town a bit. I'm just on my way with this load of fish to drop it off here at the uh, storage shed. It's to be safe for a rainy day. This is the library where people can come and borrow books. This is the school where all three of my children attend. And this is the tavern where I spend perhaps too much time. And this is the church where I was married, which I try to attend every Sunday. And this building is the postcard, which helps to decrease the pirate threat in my port and keep everyone safe. And um, right down here is the pirate threat indicator. You have to keep this down or pirates will ransack your village. And this is the lighthouse, which helps to increase port visibility and also adds to your port reputation as long as the flame is glowing. Here you know what I mean. What do I mean? Well, anyways, this building is really important. The dock. That lets you import and export anything you can think of, like beans, sugarcane, corn, pigs, chicken, anything. I've got lots of clay, so I'll export, say, 222 kilograms of clay, and boom! I'm a richer man. Well, thanks for stopping by. Hey, you should come by and try this out for yourself, okay? See you soon. Every good tale begins with children who are lost. Children who must write their own story and become strong enough to share that story with the world. To plant their banner in the fertile earth of Elderstone. My poor goblin children, oblivious, they craft and they build. Yet will their inventions of sticks and stones weather the storm that is to come? For night will fall, a darkness that no torch can hold at bay. A darkness that watches and hungers. For my lost children are not alone. My firstborn await them with cunning schemes and brutal fury. My goblins will look up at each dawn not with fear, but with hope. Their years of hiding are behind them. Goblins will build. Goblins will grow. Goblins will be lost no more. 
goblins will rule in Elderstone. Next up, it's the latest in the Anno series, Anno 1800, set in the Victorian era, at the height of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, steam engines, steam-powered ships, the Great Exhibition, all of that stuff, and am I excited? Not as much as you might think. Now, this is primarily because I got so excited for the last Anno, Anno 2205, and it was a total snooze fest. Um, is this going to be better? I have really mixed feelings based on the little bits of gameplay that I've seen. Some things really excite me. Um, the, the, all of the, the Steam stuff, the industry looks really cool, but I don't know. There are elements of the graphics and some of the gameplay that just doesn't do it for me. But we've got to wait and see what it ends up looking like, and it's going to be coming in winter 2018. I won't be holding my breath. At number five, it's Ostriv. And anyone who's familiar with my channel will know that I love this game. Now, bear in mind, Ostriv is um, still in very, very early access. It's got a long, long way to go. And the state that it's in at the moment, there's not that much content. There's a fair amount of content, but there's still a lot more to come. And incidentally, uh, he's uh, the developer. This is developed by one guy. This whole game is developed by one guy. Uh, he's just published, a, or a little while ago, he published a roadmap, which I'll put on screen for you now, uh, showing just how much more there is to add to the game. And when this game's finished, I think this, is, this game is definitely going to be up there with games like Banished. In fact, it could even be better than Banished. It's that good. But right now, it's still lacking a bit of content. We need to be patient. Also, the game is pretty buggy right now. Uh, it does need a lot of bug fixing, but it's early access. That's to be expected. What you need to know about this game is it is truly engaging. It is engrossing. It draws you in. You feel like it's your village. The way that the, the game grows very organically, the, the way that roads are generated by the grass being worn away by people walking backwards and forwards over it. You don't lay your roads. The roads grow just like your village. I would recommend, if you haven't, if you haven't seen much about Ostriff, and certainly if you haven't played it, go pick up a copy. I don't think you'll regret it. Joining this exciting mission to Mars, you will be part of shaping the future of humanity. You'll get to travel to an inspiring and beautiful new world. You'll research and utilize state-of-the-art technology. You'll construct a dynamic network with extraordinary facilities. You'll develop and sustain an innovative, self-sufficient habitat. You'll get to experience the captivating and energetic weather. You'll live in a prosperous and pleasant community where the relationship between humans and technology has been redefined. And just so you know, the dangers that you might have heard of have been greatly exaggerated. Mars is really a very safe place. Colonize Mars and discover her secrets with minimal casualties. Six months ago, when Tropico 6 was announced, I immediately put it into my top three. And 
That was sight unseen. Hadn't seen any gameplay. Now that I've actually seen some gameplay, I am confident to still leave it in my top three. What do we know about the new game? Well, instead of having a single island, you've got an archipelago. Which means something that we've never had before in a Tropico game, the ability to build bridges. And there's this new concept of world wonders and raids. Yes, El Presidente is sending out his spies and soldiers to steal wonders of the world and bring them back. And some of these are pretty funny. For example, uh, sneaking over to France, disassembling the Eiffel Tower and sneaking it back into Tropico, <laughs> hidden in tourists' luggage. I think it's going to be awesome. Viva El Presidente. Viva Llamas. Viva Tropico 6. At number two, it's Frostpunk, and having played now the demo, I can tell you this game is everything that I hoped it would be. If you want to see more, go and watch my Let's Play. Right now, enjoy the trailer. When we end up with next to nothing. We don't do what we believe is right, but we believe what we do will make us right. It is not shelter nor food that brings us consolation. For it is hope that makes us grow. Hope that there is more of us. And if not, Frostpunk's due for release in March of 2018, and let me tell you, I cannot wait. Make sure this is on your wish list. In the top spot, it's Ancient Cities. Having completed a Kickstarter where they raised 125,000 euros, which is $125,000, they went on to raise more funds with an Indiegogo campaign and raised another 93,000 euros, so about $93,000. So they've got about a quarter of a million dollars in the war chest to develop this game. So, okay, what do we know? Well, we know that the game is going to be set in the Neolithic period, or it's going to start in the Neolithic period, and you will develop your tribe and your city through the ages. The funding did unlock several stretch goals, so we'll be starting off in the early Neolithic and we'll be going through at least to the early Bronze Age. There will be an Ice Age expansion included. Uh, we will have fluid dynamics. We will be uh, going DRM free. Uh, we will have user terrain, which will be nice. Uh, more biomes and we will get sea and coastal cities. Okay, so what else have we learned about the game? Well. There definitely will not be a multiplayer. The, the developers have confirmed that. There will be combat, though, in the form of raids from other factions. Um, there will be modding support, but not in the first version. That will be developed later. And there definitely will not be any early access or open alpha. They think alpha is a development stage. It's not a product to sell. And let's face it, they've already been funded, so they don't need to do an early access. The game's not due till late 2018, so all we can do until then is sit back, cross our fingers, and hope that this game realizes the immense potential that it has. And that is my top 10 city building games for 2018. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a blast. Uh, make sure you subscribe for more top 10s and trailers. I'll catch you for the next one. Peace out.